High-quality overhead stirrers are usually much more expensive than magnetic stirrers. Therefore, I will show you today how to build such a stirrer yourself at a fraction of the cost. To get started, I drilled a 3 mm hole in the 1 quarter of an inch hex shaft of a mini quick release drill chuck. I also drilled a matching hole in a piece of brass tubing with an outside diameter of 8 mm and an inside diameter of 7 mm. The drill chuck is suitable for bits from 0.8 to 8 mm in diameter and sells for a few bucks. The two component epoxy resin is used to fill the gaps between the hex shaft and the brass tube. The connection of the hex shaft and the brass tube was then secured by an M3 stainless steel screw. Meanwhile, I collected or made more parts. Among them a 12 volts 130 RPM DC worm gear motor and a surface mount junction box made from ABS with the dimensions of 100 by 68 by 50 mm. These two parts were cut out of a 10 mm thick PVC sheet with a frat saw, sanded and drilled with appropriate holes. As usual, I first created a drawing in Inkscape, printed it out in 1 to 1 scale and then spray glued the templates onto the PVC sheet. With this method, it is possible to produce parts with very good precision. The two parts were then bolted together using two M3 stainless steel flathead bolts and nuts and secured with thread locking varnish. Another M3 stainless steel flathead bolt and nut was used to screw the box to the bracket. Now two more mounting holes could be drilled into the box. Using 4 M4 stainless steel screws and 6 mm nylon spacers, the box was mounted to the gear motor. By the way, for those who think 130 RPM is too slow, the gear motor is available with many other speeds. However, the maximum speed should not be too high to prevent liquids from splashing out when stirring. Next, we need two 8 mm axle brackets an 8 by 200 mm stainless steel rod, a custom bracket, 4 M5 by 20 mm stainless steel screws and nuts, and 4 M4 by 10 mm stainless steel screws. The custom bracket is made from a 4 by 40 mm aluminum flat bar. Again, I created a cutting and drilling template in Inkscape and attached it to the flat bar with spray adhesive. I use a 10 amps PWM DC motor speed controller. The gear motor draws no more than 2 amps in operation, 
but since the motor driver is in a box, I don't want it to get hot, plus the stall current always has to be considered when dimensioning the motor driver. The potentiometer has to be removed. Since I destroyed the potentiometer during desoldering, I used a new one. The potentiometer was then rewired. Flux residues were removed with isopropanol. After the mounting holes were drilled, I mounted the motor driver in the box. 4 M3 by 16 mm stainless steel screws, nuts and 6 mm spacers were used. Next, I drilled appropriate holes in the lid of the box for the on-off switch, the anti-clockwise clockwise switch, the operation LED, and the potentiometer. As before, a paper template has helped me with that. To create the front panel lettering, it was printed on self-adhesive printer paper. It was then covered with transparent adhesive film for protection. After the label was cut out, I glued it to the box lid. Then I wired everything up. The stirrer is powered by a 12 volts 5 amps wall wart with a standard 5.5 by 2.1 mm power jack. Now it was time to mount the LED socket, the potentiometer, and the switches. I ran the motor while doing this to see if the switches were in the right position. Via the supplied screws, the lid was finally screwed to the box.
All that remained was to attach the prepared mini quick-release drill chuck to the gear motor shaft using an 8x8mm coupling. The overhead stirrer can be mounted on any standard laboratory stand. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons.